Welcome everybody to episode 132 of the China Show. And well, Halloween's just around the corner. Ooh, spooky. Any plans? Um I was going to be I was going to dress up as PS1 Hagrid. Okay. But I thought that was insensitive because okay. he died. All right. So thinking of something else. Okay. You know. Well, uh, Xi Jinping has plans for Halloween, and that is to cancel it. <laughs> yes, yes. Actually, we'll be getting into that. That's our main topic today. Um, China has banned Halloween pretty much outright. We'll get into it in the main segment. Yeah, mostly but, for kids, obviously. But, yeah. yeah. But you know what? We've got uh, a lot to talk about, so let's jump into what's new, where we talk about what's new, specifically with regards to China. Mm-hmm. And we're going to start you out with this fantastic, super interesting thing over here what is this Similk? oh this is a great translation Mm -hmm. movement we love them so much what they do is they're chinese people that go out and translate what is on the chinese internet Mm -hmm. um and they do it to you know raise awareness raise awareness for what is people are actually saying in china because it's kind of unfair there's an ecosystem an intranet in china Mm -hmm. and it's not portrayed to the rest of the world yeah i mean just think about it imagine you um have a group of friends, and they can all speak a different language from you, right? Yeah. And they speak to you in English most of the time, but then occasionally they'll sit in the corner there and they'll talk amongst themselves in French or something, which you can't understand. Yeah. And they're just saying bad things about you all the time. But then when they speak to you face-to-face, they're saying nice things. Oh, we like you so much. But in the corner, they keep saying, that piece of shit, how can we steal from him, et cetera, et cetera. So it's kind of like having one of your own friends overhearing what they're saying and telling you what they're saying. Yeah. That's what the translation movement does because all of these things that they translate on the Chinese internet are out there. They're yeah. endorsed because on the Chinese internet, it's so controlled. If something is allowed to be there, that means the Chinese government approves of it That's and endorses correct. it. So in this uh, post by the Great Translation Movement, we can see that in Xiao Hong Shu, which is Little Red Book, it's an app for Chinese people living abroad. Yeah. Um, it's kind of its own ecosystem. I would kind of compare it to Instagram for imagine yeah. Chinese people living in different countries. Yes. Uh, but it's a mainland Chinese app, so it's mm. still controlled by the government in China. So yeah. it's a way to make, it's a really clever, it's a way to make a force an ecosystem on Chinese people so that they don't integrate with societies abroad. Yeah. So that they stay within that ecosystem so that it's still censored and controlled. Yeah. When you looked uh, up, you know, remember that the alleged purge of Hu Jintao yes. when he was removed from the 20th Party Congress? Yes. If you're on Xiao Hongshu, if you looked for Hu Jintao, it came up with nothing. They blocked out. Yeah. It, 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 you got to understand how crazy that is. It's the last leader of China. Yeah. It's the last one before she's the previous uh, leader. Yeah. It'd be like looking up, it'd be like Googling Obama or tr- Trump. Trump. It'd be it'd like be Googling like, Trump and nothing comes up. And it's like, eh, oh, sorry, there's no information <laughs> available. Can you imagine that? Yeah, right? crazy. Now, uh, if you look, looked up uh, Jiang Zemin, which is the leader before him, all it came up was some nonsense articles that were barely related. Yes. Right? But... Yeah, which you can see behind us. That's yeah. what's up here on the screen is the, the, the blank returns and the, and then the nonsense, nonsense returns. returns. Look up Xi Jinping and you just get, of course, Inundated. full on everything about Xi Jinping. Yeah, so Little Red Book has censored successfully about the purge, which, again... I want you guys to understand this alleged purge that's going on about how Hu Jintao was removed from the party congress. You got to keep in mind what, China, uh, what China's response was. Yes. And that's what we're going to be going into is why why did China do what they did if they're actually just denying that it was a purge? Yeah. You know? Yeah. If they're actively denying that, why are they doing that? We'll go through some symptoms of why we think that might be a little suspicious. For sure. And that's so, one of them. Yeah. Um yeah, there's a little joke about uh, why Hu Jintao was kicked out. He for... was removed for rolling the worst joint ever, as you can see. Um, I can see why that would be an issue. You can see how bad that is. You're not going anywhere with that one. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, so, you guys remember Bannerman? Yeah, Bannerman, bridge heroic man. guy on the bridge in Beijing. We call him Bannerman, banner. but yeah. like people are calling him Bridge Man now. I like Bannerman. I like Bannerman. It's got like a more, it's got a cadence to it. And a Bannerman is an actual thing. Yeah. You know, like carry a banner, you know. Makes sense, right? He's Bannerman. He's Bannerman. Yeah. Yeah. But if you want to call him Bridgeman, you can call him Bridgeman. He's basically Tankman 2.0. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Call him Bridgeman means people can walk all over him. True. But they shouldn't. No, he's, he's hold up the bar- yeah, banner. Hold yeah. up the banner. Mm-hmm. We'll call him Banner Man. Well, the Chinese government walked all over him, so I guess. Yeah, true. So Banner Man, uh, if you guys are out of the loop, I should have put some footage here, but he unfurled the banner in Beijing right before the party congress where yes. Xi Jinping was going to get a third term, elected. Mm-hmm. I, I put that in quotes. 
unfurls a banner and it says, uh, get rid of Xi Jinping, which Basically, is crazy yeah. to do in China. It's a death yeah. sentence. You'll be yeah. executed, right? Yeah. He also said, like, stop the zero COVID nonsense. Yeah, he said he, he doesn't says. want a cultural revolution. No cultural he wants revolution. opening up. Yes. You know, he wants progress. Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. these girls in Shanghai unfurled a banner and walked through the streets. And all they put was the beginnings of Banner Man's phrases, but didn't finish them. Right. So it was like, because on his thing, it said, don't want this, want this. Don't yes. want this, want this. So their banner says, don't want, want. But don't want, nothing want. There. But there's nothing in between, yeah. It's just to walk around with the banner that says that, and they obviously were snatched up yeah, immediately. Yeah, pretty much immediately, um, yeah. But it's crazy to very see brave, that. Very brave, very brave. Yeah, and so an update on the airdrop thing. Mm -hmm. It's a huge campaign going around in China right now where people are airdropping that Banner Man's phrases. Yeah. And a huge graffiti campaign all over the country as well. Still going on, still ongoing. It's still very happening. encouraging. Now, remember, we told you in our special report, which we you know put out on Saturday, uh, when this actually happened, we told you that the Chinese kind of response, not to the people in China, but to the outside world, was that Hu Jintao was suffering from some kind of medical problem. Yeah. And so he had to rest, and they just took him off to the side. By the way, some tankies got it very wrong. <clears throat> they were posting that he then was let back in to yeah. vote later, but he wasn't. No. He wasn't let back in. So they were all no. like, oh, you guys are just trying to smear China, that kind of nonsense. He was let back in. He wasn't let back in. No. He got taken away, hasn't been seen since. No. Okay? Um, and anyway, the whole point is that um, they were telling the rest of the world that, hey, listen, he had a medical issue, and that's why he was ushered out, which is not true if you go through the footage and analyze it. But anyway... What happened was immediately you had, and we're playing them in the background now. This, Thousands. This, let's just read this one so people can yeah. see what, what it says here. What does it say? It says, the 20th National Congress of the Communist Party of China closed. Former General Secretary of the Communist Party of China, uh, Hu Jintao, was taken away by the venue, of the, by the service staff, due to poor health and rested after returning to the scene to vote. Yes. Which is wrong. It's wrong. It's false. He, wa he did not return to the scene to vote. Okay. No, but what's the most important thing about this? The important thing about this is that this misinformation, which is here, which is clearly misinformation because it's wrong, mm -hmm. was then posted by thousands and thousands of bot accounts, which we're going to show you now in the background. We're going to show you very briefly. We'll let it run. Um, let me actually take it back to the beginning so you can see. Uh, this is what the Chinese Communist Party does. I'm going to look at this one, for instance. Usman Yusuf. When was it made? Was it joined in 2016? If you go to some of these accounts, they haven't posted anything. So they so hijack old, they hijack hijack accounts. old accounts or they just make new ones like this one. Joined in May 2022. Yep. It's got one follower. Yep. Um, and what they do is these. what you're seeing is they posting the exact same thing. So the whole point of this is that these fake accounts that you're seeing here have exactly the same text, copy yep. and pasted yes. than the, uh, as the one we first read out to you. So... What they were doing was trying to spread this message out as far and as wide as possible using fake accounts, yeah. which kind of proves hmm. that there's something afoot. Hmm. Because why would you do that? I mean, let's just we'll What's just look point, at some of right? these accounts. You know, they're just tiny bot little accounts. bot accounts, absolutely yeah. not real accounts, either yeah. co-opted or brand new. October 2022, these ones here. October 2022. Yeah. They've just joined October 2022. Yeah, what we're showing you like the account and then we're showing you the post that they made, the which is the post. exact same post, right? Yeah. 2022, 2022, October 22, okay? October 2022. This October is thousands, 2022. by the way. Oh, yeah, thousands, thousands of, of these. these things. Uh, and it just goes again to, to show you the nasty way the Chinese government takes advantage of Western social media. Yeah. Not only Twitter, but YouTube specifically and Facebook and every other Western social media is clearly used in underhanded ways to push Chinese government narratives. Why are people like I'd like to know. I want to mm -hmm. I want to hear more from like some really good media outlets like BBC and, yeah. BBC and stuff that covered the, the purge. Yeah. Um, I want to see follow ups from them with this because it shows to me very clear intent when you have thousands and thousands of accounts, thousands of accounts, not just posts, yeah. thousands of accounts that are posting this verbatim clear message that the government wants everyone to think. Yes. Why? Like, why is no one talking about that? It's it's quite clear that they're trying to misguide the public because it's, yes. it's, it's put out by the government and it's a lie. 
Yes. It's and, it's a proven lie. And this is the one that the tankies were running with as yeah. well. They were taking this and saying, see, he went back to vote. He didn't. What, what does that show you? There's a directive telling people that work on behalf of spreading the Chinese government's message that there is a narrative to put out, and this is the narrative. If you saw tankies doing this, it matches exactly up with this misinformation campaign with correct, thousands of Twitter correct. accounts. Yeah. So it's just Chinese government misinformation again. And like I said, Twitter being taken advantage of. Um, uh, Elon Musk, uh, are you going to do something about this? I'm just, I'm afraid that he's going to I'm so worried. go the other way and allow I'm this so just to continue, but even more. Anyway, moving on from that, we have some funny stuff to show you. This is a, a, a class for fathers yeah, in fathers. China, new fathers. And I, I mean, being a fairly new father myself mm-hmm. and yourself, you, you know what it's like in the beginning. You just have no idea what you're doing. Yeah. It's scary. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I thought, you know, I kept checking to make sure my kid's not dead all the time. Because, you know, it's like when your first kid and it's just Put new. A little mirror up to their nose. Yeah, he sure just like makes sure it's like listening. Yeah. Are they still breathing? Yeah. Is that is that lump of weird things still alive? Yeah. You know, yeah. you don't know. Anyway, so this is, uh, I'll show you, this is a, obviously they're teaching them how to, I don't know, lay them down or something. Change a diaper or something, yeah. I've never changed a diaper by putting my kid hey, face whatever, down. Neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, that, the last yeah, I'll play the last bit again. So, um, yeah, <laughs> the, guy. The, the guy on the left there in the gray sweater, hoodie. Yeah, what's he doing? He's like, okay, he's like you gotta get this baby ready. He's trying to follow the teacher, obviously. He's like, he's okay, like, let me adjust that. Oops, <laughs> no, that's probably not what you want to do. No, that's not what you want to do. No. Now, um, before we show you this clip, we got to explain to you that there's a certain type of auntie in China. Okay, we call them grab hags. <laughs> yeah. Okay, they're called dama or hey. No I-E. one, no one even knows what auntie even means, especially in America. We don't have that word. You don't have auntie. No, you don't no, say aunt. Oh it's yeah, because you say your, aunt. And no, but it's only if it's your actual aunt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like the little no, stop, little creature. Stop, my, this is my yeah, exactly, like a little creature that <laughs> crawls on on sticky things <laughs> on the floor. You know, like leaves trails, okay, makes a hill. It's it. In America, it's, yeah. it has to be your actual aunt. Okay. Yes, aunt. It there has to be your yeah. your relative. Yeah. yeah and it's yeah. not some distant. You know how like other countries, it's got it. could be some distant thing. No, it's no. your mom's or dad's sister. Right. That's gotcha. it. Right. Stops there. Right. So to explain to you guys, it just means a woman of a certain age. Yes. Which let's say fifty-five to seventy. Yeah, and I mean, I, I think there's a bit of a more communal feeling in China yeah. where everyone's yeah. like, everyone's a sister or a brother or an yeah, aunt yeah. or a, an uncle. It's an Asian thing. Yeah, it, you see that a lot, yeah. right? And Shao Yo or whatever, little friend. Yeah, and all of <laughs> Korea is like that. Yeah, it's interesting. But there's, there's a specific demographic of these uh, grab hags, we call them, which are like the most infuriating people you'll ever meet. They're hated throughout the whole country all, of China. Yeah, Chinese people hate, hate them. them too. And what they do is they're opportunists, right? Dama, they're like... Yeah. Yeah, Dama or, or like a Hei Ai, yeah. they also call them. Like, they're basically like these vile creatures that will take anything they can. If they see an opportunity to take something for free, yeah. they do. You get them here in, uh, in the States as well. They'll line up in the in those lines where they yeah. give handouts for homeless people for and homeless stuff. People and they'll, and they'll the be from a rich food. family. They'll yeah. go stand in the line just to take the free stuff, you know? They're like the, like the Chinese government thinks they make them lose face. Chinese people hate them too because yes. they make them lose face. And we get it. If you live in China for like 10 years, You'll understand. you know the IE culture. Yes, you yeah. understand. I mean, do you remember... Um, in, in China, sometimes when they have a real estate, uh, like a big th- like an opening yeah. they're going to sell, they'll have a gimmick, right? right? And I remember one time, one of the real estate um, places, they were giving away live chickens to like whoever came, and it was destroyed by these aunties. They just came and destroyed the place to get a live chicken. And the other one where if you stood in line to sign up for this event, you'd get a free bottle of water, but it's just a free bottle of water. And the, the queues were so long. The IEs, the aunties were Let's standing. Say IE. You guys learn IE. Yeah, yeah, IE. IE. Yeah, so the mm. IEs were standing in line in the midday sun for two hours yeah. to get a free bottle of water, which is stupid because by the you time you, yeah, you've wasted that free bottle of water anyway. So <laughs> it's just water. It's, it, it, you have to understand the mindset. We're trying to get you to understand the mindset. So now, what we've got behind us, we want to show you here is hilarious. Okay, this is funny. We'll play it once, and then then we'll tell you what's going on. Yeah, 
<laughs> okay, so wait, let's go back. For those of you who don't know what's going on, there's um, a promotional event going on here, right? And um, what you can see is, is there's a lady sitting there handing out a free whatever it is. I don't know if it's tissues or there's something, right? Mm -hmm. So you got these three IEs and they're doing like a carousel. They're like one grabs something and then goes <laughs> to the back of the line and then the next one grabs and goes to the back of the line. And they're just yes. going around and around taking as many of these free things yes. as possible. So let's take a look again. Sorry for the loud volume. Here we go. See them just going around and around taking the free thing. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, people are trying to hate this so much. <laughs> so you'll get these these three IEs will deplete the entire stock of the freebie giveaways and nobody else can get them because yeah. they, they're they there just taking them all. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, talk about taking advantage. It's yeah, terrible. For sure. um, and like like we said, no one in China likes this demographic either. No, so. this is, this is again, this is a product of the uh, that old day. Yes. You know, the great leap forward when everyone is like losing everything the most cutthroat people survive yeah this is what the symptom is yeah you know under chairman mao and here's like somebody had a, a crashed into a mango seller's store or something so there's mangoes all over the ground and of course the eyes are running into to grab him um mango you, you can see yeah up there it's like oh quick yeah. free fruit like never mind the fact that there's Somebody's like crashed. there's a crash or whatever let's grab them all and then um just to show you the obnoxious nature of them, we've got uh, uh, when they disagree, what might happen in an elevator. Let's just show you very quickly here. I love that kid. Oh. Um, and we got a little treat from, for you guys over here. Yeah. Uh, one of our friends who's an English teacher in China sent us a little clip of this... Uh, this lovely book, which they used to teach vegetables to the kids, English words, right? So we thought we'd uh, go through it. Should we just let them read it? Yeah. Okay, we're not going to read it. You guys read it, okay? We're just going to put it up for you. Okay, let's see. It's typical. So anyway, um, yeah. moving on. Moving on. We have yeah. the COVID uh, tests. We have the kids that are now being brainwashed, not just brainwashed, being forced to go in their schools and in sort of, you know, any 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 place where there's like kids together, they're making them do dances and, and songs about yes. COVID testing. And it's about, let's go. So it means like, go, let's go do our uh, COVID test together. Yeah. Right? Nucleic like, acid yes, test. Let's go. It's like, let's go do COVID they're, they're tests. making it into songs now for the little kids. Like, let's go have a COVID test together. So we thought we'd show you a little bit of this um, this song. You we guys want, are going to love this song. We're not going to torture you with the whole thing because no. with the little segment we're going to play for you just repeats anyway there's nothing else yes. to the song so you're not missing out on anything right uh let's play it for you here we go get ready it's gonna be awesome I think you... Yeah, you think, get the idea. I, oh, I really? Because I was about to say, I think they want to hear it again. You want to hear that again? I think it's really important that they understand this song. What, the Zohu Swan? Yeah. You just, they back. need to know, because they need to go... They, Stop! <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You didn't see anything. No. All right. So... <laughs> that means, like, let's do... I put subtitles up there. So... I want everyone to know this aesthetic. When there's a government initiative to do or promote something, mm -hmm. they put out like these karaoke songs. Yeah. And it'll be the most lazy. It almost, everyone almost sounds the same. It's like that Huawei. Yeah, how? it's all the same yeah. vibe. Right? Yeah, it is. It's this bad, like almost Russian techno shit song. Yeah. For lack of better words. And then they put like whatever propaganda lyrics over it. Yeah. And they'll rush it out. They'll rush it out real quick. This yeah. is the one that they're making they, kids They're using right that now. like sand art. You know that like sand art? Yeah. Where, where is that from? I don't know, Tibet or something. This from Tibet? The sand know. art? I think sand. Let me see. Yeah, where's the sand art? I don't want to say it's traditional Chinese if it's not. Um, because... Where does sand art come from? Yeah. Where, this like, you know, drawing in sand or whatever. Sand painting, yeah. Sand painting, yeah. Where's it from? Origins. 
Where does sand painting come from? Dry sand painting. Dry painting exists in highly developed forms in the Na Navajo and Pueblo Indians. Oh, oh, yeah? Native Americans, eh? Yeah, it's Native American. What, this is Native American? Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. I suppose I had to get the idea from somewhere. Well, um, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't anyway, matter because what I was trying to say is that it actually looks kind of crap. I think it looks, it's very impressive. It's very impressive. Yeah. No, don't get me wrong. I think the fact that you can draw very like good pictures like this using sand is fantastic. Right. But I think if they could use a pen and like maybe paper and paint or something, they could actually make something look much nicer. I mean, it's got it's, whoever's doing this has got artistic talent. Use better tools. I, I, that's like I think it's unnecessary criticism. Here. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I think it looks it's very impressive to do it and it's different, right? Yeah, but it's being used to like force children to take like nucleic yes. acid tests. That's that's the real point. Here, <laughs> yeah, yeah this, I think this so. Creepy propaganda is being. Drawn in sand art. Yes, in sand art. Everyone, Zuo He Swan, okay? Zuo He Swan. Zuo He Swan. Well, yeah, um, anyway. Yes. Sand painting, man. I think that's unnecessary to criticize sand painting. I think it can look very cool. Okay, yeah. I mean, you, you can think like all you want. Sketch. Yeah, yeah. Etch a sketch is great. Anyway, you want to see what a Zuo He Swan looks like, by the way? Yeah, let's have a look. This is why they have to prepare the kids. This is in Guangzhou, right? Yeah, just shot. Actually. Okay. Um, just have a look at this. These are the people lining up to take the test. Okay, I'm gonna actually pause it. You can see the da bai, as yeah, they the, call them. The test right there. Oh, hang on. Let me yes. get a small. Yeah, this side. Can yeah. you see him? Can you see him there? Now, this nucleic acid COVID test. Okay, I'm just gonna call it a COVID test. We've decided to call it COVID test now. Let's not just like say COVID test. Stop COVID saying test, nucleic, nucleic acid. acid. Not you. I'm saying. Yeah, let's just in stop. general. Yeah, let's just call it a COVID test. Now, the people that are lining up to get their COVID test, they have to, because to do anything in China right now, you need to have had a COVID test. Like if you want to go into work, you have to have a green health code and you have to have had a COVID test. So, if you want to go anywhere, you have to have a COVID test. And you have an app, right? Yeah. And it has green, yellow, which is like warning you've been near an area and then yeah. you have to wait Then you a have to have a to test clear. to get a yeah. green again. And then there's red, which means that there's a case in that area. Yeah. And Somebody drove by this, just drove by on their way to work, and their app turned yellow. Because they were close, yeah. Yeah. But look at this, guys. Mm. Let's. Can you pause on the actual undulating crowd? That's for the COVID test because, presumed, mm -hmm. there's been a case in the area, so they want to shut it all down, make sure everyone's tested, make sure everything's fine. Yeah. How do you think? Just just real quick. I want to ask the Xi Jinping, admi Xi Jinping administration because mm -hmm. they love the zero COVID shit so sure, much. Sure, sure. How do you think? Just how do you think COVID is spread? How do you think it's yeah, spread? Yeah. Do you think it might might perhaps be when it's giant undulating crowds where people can barely even move? <laughs> where people are basically just Breathing rubbing up against mouths. each other, spitting each, in each other's ears. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> How you do you know? think this spreads? <laughs> Yeah, they're intermingling their sweat glands. I don't know what's going on there, but it's bad. I'd also like to pose another thing. Yeah. All these people, I've seen very high profile people in, in tankies in China and, mm -hmm. you know, male, female, everyone. Um, go out there and, and congratulate China for doing such a good job with zero COVID policy. Guys, this is what it looks like. Yeah. How? Please take this clip right here. Clip this out of our video right now. Commentate on this. I really would love to see your take. Yes. The people that are going around, the foreigners and... The people going for the Chinese government, like they're doing a great job with the zero COVID thing. Take yeah. this clip out. Tell me how this is a good job. Tell me. Yeah. I'd love to know. Please. Yeah, it's ridiculous. You have to understand that it, the scale under which this is all happening is insane. Never before seen. Okay. Imagine you have a factory, right? You got factory dormitories. Yeah. Before you're allowed to enter the factory, you have to have been tested and you have to have your green code. You have to do this. Do you understand the amount of testing that's going on is insane? Yeah. Okay. Not only is it a massive inconvenience and there are choke points everywhere. So yeah. like people can't just go to work anymore. Now they're going to be stuck for like an hour, hour and a half in a line to get their test before they can go to work and stuff. But the amount of waste... Every single test requires the swabs, requires a little test, plastic test tube, requires to tear open that plastic thing. 
Plastic millions, lid. yeah, <laughs> millions <laughs> and millions and millions and millions of plastic waste <laughs> crap. Yeah, exactly. But think about it. Every day, I know it's insane. Every Why day, is no one talking about the waste, the sheer oceanic waste. Where is it all going? Where does it go? Yeah. I want to know where these swaps go because there's millions every every minute. <laughs> every minute, there are millions of these things yeah. in China right now. Anyone who's in China right now knows that you're having your nucleic acid test every 24 hours or every yes. 48 hours or whatever. But China's the future for green green technology. Right now. They're the future for destroying the planet. <laughs> All of this waste is going to end up in the oceans, or it's going to be end. It's going to end up somewhere bad. It's not going to be disposed of correctly. Seriously. Um, Seriously. So if you can see that crowd down there, each one of them is going to now generate like a, a handful of plastic waste. Each person, right? Multiple times a week. You know what else they're going to generate? Right. A COVID. Yeah. Because they're all. Freaking crowding, and it's not their fault. They're forced no, to do this. It's dumb. It's a Ridiculous. stupid policy. I just hope people can see that there's more to this than like, oh, they 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 really care about everyone. They want to make do sure they? everyone's safe. Do they? It's they... quotas. It's government quotas from the mm. top that are so out of touch with reality. They have no idea how daily people are living. Yeah. They, nobody in the top leadership sees this. They no. don't. No one. No one in their cabinet allows them to see this. So they don't yeah. understand what a disaster it is. It is. It's a disaster to everyone's livelihood. It's destroyed entire industries. It's destroyed people's the lives. It's destroyed the future of china yeah china could have kept going uh one thing it has done is given the government a lot of control over yes. the people Which is really, yeah you know because imagine you have no choice you, no. you have no choice you go to jail i'm so sick and tired of these people always sending me messages oh i just got a job in beijing or shanghai yeah, like, should i like give me some advice on how to go there here's the advice do it? don't don't go to China. Not now. Very not, simple. Unless you want to just be arbitrarily incarcerated because somebody happened to have a cold somewhere nearby. Right. Yeah. You know? Anyway, it's it's yeah. just absurd. It's absurd. It's absurd. Um, yeah, this is from what the university used to teach. It? Yeah. So this is crazy. I, yeah. I put this. They actually locked down some trains. These are students. Yeah. They locked down trains at this university, like going into, you know, the kids are going coming back to school. Yeah. Um, and I, this is at the university I taught at in Inner Mongolia. So when I was teaching here, what would happen is I'd say 90% of the students weren't from, from Bauto, not from the, the, the city, right? Yeah. They're from other parts of Inner Mongolia, and they were really poor usually. They would get grants from their local village because they did well in the Gaokao exam. Sure. And then they would get like either free or reduced tuition to the school. So it was kind of like crazy to see my like kind of middle of nowhere university crop up on the, on the Chinese internet because they've locked these students into the trains and they won't let them out because of a covid case right so this these boxes you know with like barely any ventilation and they make them wear these uh suits as well these hazmat suits crazy it's not getting any better guys you know the the what we're hearing from people all over china right now like what's happening in wuhan again yeah oh yeah they locked down a good chunk of the city now Remember and, the pool party place? Yeah, we had some journalists reach out to us today. They're like, mm. hey, can we talk to your contacts in China? Because we heard that Wuhan's in lockdown again. Remember when they had the pool party and they're like, we beat COVID, the rest of the world's dying. And they're making fun of millions of Americans dying. Yeah. They're like laughing in Chinese yeah. media. Yeah. And they're like, look, we have a pool party. Well, it's back let's, again. let's look at karma come right back around. While me and you mm -hmm. were sending supplies to China in yep. the initial outbreak, we were taking our, our money yep. and your guys' money that you donated. Thank you for that. Yeah. Sending it to hospitals and people we trusted in China. To buy masks and To stuff. buy masks mm -hmm. and PPE. The Chinese government was laughing, teaching their people to laugh at Americans dying on respirators. Yes. While we did charity. Yeah. And now that I think that karma has come right back around and there's lockdowns back in Wuhan. And unfortunately, that karma is misplaced because it's hurting the people yeah. again. Just like China always does, the government's hurting the people, not themselves. There's a couple of other places that um, people have reached out to me that are under heavy lockdown, like Shiling and, and other. Yeah. There are places where you don't hear about it. You keep seeing drips and drabs. But the problem is, again, it's uh, there, there's fatigue. People don't want to hear no. about COVID. So you no. see... You see more pictures of people being rounded up and put in like containers yeah. and, and stuff. And you're like, like I saw that. you're like, oh, that's something I already saw. No, you didn't already see that. That's new stuff that's happening. This is still continuing. And it's it's actually just getting uh -huh. worse. Yes, it is actually just getting worse. And people living in China are living in some kind of delusion. A lot of the people that, um, yeah. you know, the, the foreigners that I'm in contact with, because when their area is not affected, they think it's fine. They don't realize just... Just a uh, hundred kilometers out, there's a whole city that's locked down. They don't or even, they don't even, even in their sometimes. own city, there yeah. are areas that are yeah. very like seriously locked down. They'll be like, "Look at my neighborhood, it's fine." Yeah, and they're like, "Uh, 
bro, like two kilometers away. Yeah. They're at full lockdown. But then when they get locked down, then they're like, oh, this sucks. So it's like, oh, well, yeah, but, you know, it's normally okay. Anyway. This, it's all that copium. It's all the copium. It's terrible. We just have to keep bringing this up, unfortunately. Uh, here we've got a woman who, if you take a look over there, actually escaped. Yeah, I want people to pay attention to the, those buildings. Mm. Those are little capsules. And that was something that was used in the beginning by a lot of media to be like, look at how bad these lockdowns and stuff are in China. Mm -hmm. Those are ubiquitous now. Yeah. They're all, there was kind of a shocking image. It's like these people reaching their hand out for their bowl of rice or whatever, yeah, yeah. or to get their, their COVID test. Not yes. I keep saying it in my head in Chinese. Yeah. It's all her swan or whatever. It's all her swan. When they're it's all her swan. Yeah. Um, they would put out their arms or put out their head to get their temperature checked or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. And these capsules were iconic. It was like, this is the symbol of, of Chinese oppression. Right? Yeah. Now they're all over the country and they build them in these kind of empty lots. Sure. These dirt lots where they call them like quarantine facilities. Quarantine you, facilities, yeah. That's where you get shipped off to when the bus yeah. comes and this picks these, up this everyone. Is what they look like. Yeah. They're like trailer capsules. Yeah. And so basically, uh, just as, well, I don't know, someone captured this. It's a rare sight to see someone actually be able to like upload some photos, but mm -hmm. this woman broke out of one. Yeah, but she was she chased, chased down, down by the Dabai and he, he's he got a big pole, pinned her down with pole. a big pole, yeah. 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 And uh, more testing down there. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just, it is what it is. It's disgusting. It's terrible. Um, and this is just peak China, isn't uh, it? Okay. Just peak, really. Peak. So here's another translation. This also from the Great Translation Movement? I don't or? think so. Okay. <laughs> so we have an official notice from the whatever, please. Is in that Fuzhou, yeah. in Fuzhou? Yeah. The, okay. So the, the one on the rest says, it's uh, small. okay, the one on the left, it says, <clears throat> man arrested on 2510. A couple days ago. Yeah. Days ago. For spreading false information about coming lockdown of Fuzhou. Okay. So he basically went out and he told people, hey, guys, there's going to be a lockdown. Get prepared. Go get yeah. your vegetables or whatever you need. Yeah. And then what was it on the same so day? So the, the false information was he was arrested for because what the response, the official response was there is no lockdown yeah. coming. Yeah. So he was arrested by right. saying there's a lockdown coming. And the next day, the same in the news, it's <laughs> like, Fuzhou will stop all <laughs> gathering. Public facilities are closed. There's a lockdown. Because it's a lockdown. Yeah. So it's, it's peak China. You arrest somebody for spreading the truth. And then you release yeah. the same thing the next day. Yeah. <laughs> guys, like, get ready, guys. It's going to be a lockdown. Swan. We got yeah. some old trolls like Lola here saying this is pre recorded. Oh, yeah? How is it pre recorded? Swan. Ugh, stop. It's not pre recorded at all. No. Anyway, mm. um, keep going. Yeah, let's keep going. Keep on rolling. We shall. Don't this you guy. worry. Oh, yeah, another hero. Now, this guy didn't unfurl a banner, but he tried to tear one down. He, yeah, he undid a banner. Yeah. So this is one of those Xi Jinping, should I, whatever, yeah. Zhongguo nonsense. It's like Xi Jinping is great. Xi Jinping's era, you know, all this yeah. nonsense. So he's like, screw this, and actually New comes in there. the socialism of Chinese characteristics. Yeah. So um, he is ripping down the part that says Xi, Xi Jinping, Jinping. Which he's pretty intense probably to take down the whole Yeah, thing. I think he wanted to take the whole thing down, but it didn't work out for him, though, did it? I believe he was. Uh, he's unbanner man. Yeah, he's unbanner yeah, man. Yeah, exactly. Says he's unbanner man. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so unbanner man obviously is going to disappear forever. Um, he was arrested. Chad. Right? Oh, of course. I mean, unless he somehow manages, there's so many de defining details in there. He yeah, it's unfortunate because seconds. like his his identity, well, he is wearing a mask, but is he? Yeah, I don't think so. No, he's not. Yeah, he is. Oh yeah, or at least his. Well, he's got a scarf or something his, yeah. over his nose. Nah, they'll they'll get him. They'll, get yeah, him. they'll nab him. Unfortunately, um, let's hope not though. Yeah, let's hold out a little bit of glimmer of hope that he made it out alive because you should be able to protest, you know, these ridiculous propaganda slogans everywhere. For sure, and definitely pro uh, protest the... Please do! I mean, come on, guys. Honestly, if your entire livelihood was destroyed because of a stupid government program like the Zero COVID thing... It's um, ruined the entire country and the yeah. future of China. It's insane. That's, that's not an understatement. Yeah. If, you're, if you're like a thriving <laughs> businessman, let's say, and you have a restaurant, yeah. and you're doing well, and you're finally being able to provide for your family and all that, and you've bought your first house, and all of a sudden you're not allowed to have an open restaurant anymore... And you're also not allowed to leave your house anymore. No one is. You lose your business. All your debts don't go away. You still oh. have to pay your rent. That's the crazy thing. It's like you still yeah. have to pay the rent yeah. for the business. That doesn't stop. All of your savings, everything you've ever earned is now taken away from you because of Xi Jinping's stupid COVID policy. You're going to strike out. 
I would. Yeah. I'd tear down. I'd be like, screw this. Absolutely. You know? Find some, some other weird way to do it. Yeah, civil disobedience, you know? Hell yeah. But not in China, you know, it's uh, it, it ends up with you being disappeared, but it doesn't solve any of the yeah, problems. Yeah, I mean, you can't do it in China. Yeah. yeah. You know, you it's can't go stand, nature. you can't stand on the side of the road with a sign saying, you know, uh, whatever, no, screw, you're done. screw Biden or screw Trump or whatever. You, you can do, do that here. You do the equivalent in China, you're dead. Yeah, you can't hold up a sign saying screw Xi Jinping. No. You will go to jail. You know, you will be disappeared. Yeah. Uh, people have to realize that, especially the people that keep championing China for whatever reason. Those are th the people that champion China are the guys that are always going out and protesting and doing whatever. Isn't right? that weird? Isn't it strange? Yeah. It's like all the things they do, they, they can't, can't do, do in China. China. It's impossible. Yeah, maybe they, they wouldn't just, be able maybe to. They're over it now, and they're like, I would love to go to a place where I can't do that. Maybe, <laughs> but maybe they, maybe they can. If they go hold yeah. up signs, screw America, or They'll screw, be like, yes. they, they can actually yeah. do that in China because sure, you sure. can't protest against like a foreign nation, but you yes. can't get a gathering though. Not allowed to have a gathering. No. So if anyone gathers around, you get arrested anyway. Yeah. Stupid people. Don't, don't be hypocrites. Yeah. yeah, let's continue. Well, it's actually time for us to um, say a thank you to our sponsor, by yes. the way. And um, um, this video is brought to you by 5-Minute News. 5-Minute News is a fantastic service which allows you to catch up on the news. You got something to say about it over there? Yeah, well, actually, I just wanted to say um, for you guys... If you are looking for like a news outlet that's not, you know, you know, you when you go in your Apple news feed or whatever mm -hmm. and you're like sifting through whatever article and it's from all these sources or whatever, but there's so much chaff in there. You don't really, yeah. what if you just want to see like what's the most important news yeah. and you want to do it in audio. So let's say you're in the morning drinking coffee or uh, eating your breakfast or just driving because you can't read, right? So you can't read. This is an, a fantastic uh, uh, audio news podcast and it's only a few minutes, right? Yeah. And what you can actually do is pop that on during your you know, busy morning and mm -hmm. actually listen to that or anytime throughout the day. Uh, so 5 Minute News has sponsored this video. We're really happy to have them. And uh, I'd like to say their words. So many news networks, but which one to trust? Journalist Anthony Davis of the 5 Minute News podcast provides a trusted voice among the news. Featuring only the three most important world news stories of the day, published Monday through Friday, the 5-Minute News Podcast fills a forgotten sector of the news industry. That's true news. Factual, verified, and responsible news gathering without the need for dramatization, embellishment, or theatrics. 5-Minute News cuts through the noise of legacy cable and network television news whilst going deeper than traditional radio news bulletins. 5-Minute News focuses on inequality, health, and climate issues with the goal of making politics relatable. The podcast Just, offers... It's great. No, it's great to watch you read. Keep going. The uh, podcast offers no opinion and no bias, just the facts. 5-Minute News is published early in the morning, so you can listen while you have breakfast and lets you get on with your day knowing you're fully informed. Subscribe today to the daily newscast that matters at 5minute.news. That's 5minute.news. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Again to 5minute.news for sponsoring this video. We appreciate it very much, and we also appreciate your service. So let's get on with the show, guys. We're going to move into Soft Power Hour, which is where we talk about the main topic of the show, how China is trying to change your mind through all the weird and wonderful ways. And today, we're actually going to be talking about Halloween. <clears throat> As you probably gathered from the thumbnail, um, Halloween is something that is celebrated, as I'm sure you know, in most countries. Yep. Um, Strangely enough, where I grew up in South Africa, we didn't really celebrate it. Sure. Some people did. Some sure. people definitely did, but uh, it's not very widely celebrated. I love, I love Halloween here. It's great. Yeah, it's cool. It's great to see the community. It's great to see the people going out there and putting out decorations. It gives the kids something to look forward to, you know, the whole getting dressed up and everything. I, I love it a lot. Very sort of generous sort of a holiday. Giving away free candy and stuff, it is right? Generous it's, holiday. Yeah. It's generous. I, it I like it. I like the generosity of it. Um, anyway, uh, let's show you a little something in the background here before we get started. What's this little kid saying? So, what is that? He said, We won't celebrate Christmas. We'll only celebrate Chinese holidays. So, uh, as part of, I did a whole expose on this actually. As a Xi Jinping thought, which is Xi Jinping's new kind of. Uh, almost like a doctrine yes. to teach the children in education. Uh, they actually have to use a textbook which teaches Xi Jinping's ideas, kind of like they did with Mao Zedong's time, Chairman Mao. Yeah. 
And uh, one of the whole pushes in Xi Jinping thought was to get rid of all foreign influence. That is something they're trying to eradicate. So you remember in Chairman Mao's time, they were actually trying to get rid of Chinese influence. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, enough. yeah. They were destroy the olds, Yeah, destroy right? the four olds. Destroy all of the things about China that makes China, China, right? Mm -hmm. Chinese culture, all that stuff is bad. Yeah. And I'm not being facetious. That was that, the idea. That's what they were saying. Yeah, China, they're going to destroy temples yeah, and yeah. Burn Chairman, manuscripts. Yeah, Chairman Mao said China is bad. Yeah. And so we need to become like the Soviet Union. He was obsessed with the Soviet Union. Yeah. So he wanted to destroy China to make new China. And that's actually what it's called. It's called Xin Zhongguo. It's like, new if China. you hear like, well, 没有共产党就没有新中国, which means like without the Communist Party, there would be no new China. And yeah. new China is the phrase. Yeah. New China. So right now we're in new China. Yes. This is the era of new China. So Xi Jinping is the leader of new China, not old China. Yeah. New China is almost like a different country, right? Mm -hmm. So in new China, Xi Jinping thought is a continuation of Mao Zedong thought in, in many ways. And the new, the new idea is to rid China of foreign influence now. And not to bring back Chinese culture. It's to bring back Chinese culture that's approved and commandeered by the Chinese government. Correct. Right? And one of those hu huge key features of Xi Jinping thought for education in textbooks is... No more foreign culture, and that includes foreign holidays, foreign textbooks, foreign music, foreign movies. And you can see the whole goal of China is to create an intranet. Mm. You know, with the internet, we're living in an internet age where everything's shared. To cut off from that and have its own centralized intranet, have its own music and movies and influence to where there's no things coming in from the outside. Yeah. And you see that here in this phrase. This is a campaign they were getting children to say Xi Jinping thought ideas. And one of the most celebrated ones we saw was we're not going to celebrate foreign holidays. We'll only celebrate Chinese holidays. Yeah. In an effort to do that, they banned Christmas. Um, of course, you saw like little clandestine things. Maybe someone put up a little Christmas tree or something. But in many cities, they would remove those influences. They'd remove the decorations of Santa Claus. Yeah. They'd stop. Most importantly, this is really focused, hyper-focused on classroom uh, etiquette. Not allowing the children to celebrate those foreign holidays within yes. the classroom. Yes. Uh, and this is what we're seeing right now with the Halloween ban, which you yeah, said. Yeah, and, you know, it's it's very disheartening to see because, you know, when when I first got to China, foreign holidays were embraced. Yes. But they, they were not embraced from, like, a religious perspective, from a capitalist perspective. Yeah. So, you know, it's Christmas time. <clears throat> You'd see massive Christmas decorations in the malls, you know. When you, when you and I used to teach kids, yeah. they'd always have, like, a big Halloween party. Oh, they'd course. have a big... Christmas party. Oh, people loved it. You know, like if you were a foreign um, teacher and you're a little bit fat, you would have to dress up as Santa Claus. You know it. You know it, right? We oh, always yeah. had one foreign teacher who's kind of just the right shape for Santa, you know? We um, always did. We always yeah. had one of those. Yes, and it would always be, have to be Santa. You didn't have a have choice. To be Santa. Yeah. Um, Definitely wasn't me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you'd have to strap a pillow or something yeah, and then sure. you'd do it. You know, that's what we'd do back in the day. But basically, it was fun for the kids. Mm -hmm. And it was like the whole consumerism thing, you know, everyone buying Christmas presents and so on and so forth. But it was fun. And it was a super fun thing for the kids, especially around yeah. Halloween and so on. Yeah. But uh, honestly, while, while we were still there, we started to see it wane away. And a couple of times you would see these things about like, oh, China's banning Christmas or whatever. And it's true, they would. They would actually go out and if you are running any kind of government-linked thing yeah. or a government school or anything like that, they would be like, no, you may not have anything to do with a Western holiday in this school. Yeah. No Christmas, no yeah. Halloween, delete it, okay? So all Christmas parties or Halloween parties or get-togethers or games or anything were all canceled. And we saw this progress more and more to also reach out to more public spaces. Like hotels were being told you're not allowed to, you know, have, you know, I don't know, Christmas decor and things like that in your lobby and things. You know, it was getting worse and worse. So up until this point, most private schools have actually, like international private schools, have managed to kind of skirt around this law mm -hmm. and still be able to have their Halloween parties and their Christmas parties and stuff, yeah. right? But there's, there's a bloke... Um, on Twitter, I'll show you here now, right now, um, who posted this. Um, this is the guy that was stuck in Sanya under lockdown. Uh, oh, he's oh, a, the Hainan, he always wore a hat. Era, Arabs, mm, adventures. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that's he's, he's a, he's a small time YouTuber in China and he's just very positive about China, loves China. Sure. He loves living there, but um, he keeps getting beat down, which is kind of, you know, that sucks. sucky. Um, anyway, the thing is, this is what he posted out yesterday. He said, my school here in China was supposed to celebrate Halloween tomorrow. The kids have been so excited for it. They wanted to wear their costumes and have fun. 
but there's been a government announcement saying we can't celebrate it. What a complete joke. Let the kids have fun. Yeah, and this is really in line with some other stuff. So we did some background research. Yeah. Uh, multiple uh, schools across China, so multiple provinces. Yeah. Uh, we reached out to the teachers that are still there. All of them had their uh, Halloween celebrations canceled. Yes. Some of them didn't have them planned to begin with because mm -hmm. they knew it wasn't allowed. Especially now that Xi Jinping's pretty much just solidified mm. his, not pretty much, he has solidified his power. This is one of his big things that he pushes for, is yeah. removal of Western influence, right? So this is a fantastic way for him to put his foot down. It's like, yep. no. No foreign holidays. Even if it's a private school. So anyway, I just wanted to go through some of the reaction to this, right? Yeah. Um, I, I did reply to him and I said, um, you're not living in a free country, mate. The CCP can change the rules on a whim and no one can do a thing about it. They're also rooting out Western influence and Halloween is seen as a Western influence since it's a Western festival. And I know I, I used the wrong rooting there, by the way. It should yeah, be like rooting okay. like a... Uh, that's yeah. okay. I understand what yeah, you meant. Yeah, rooting it out. Getting rid of it, right? It must have been like 3 a.m. in the morning or something. Okay. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, um, it turns out it is because of that. Uh, because somebody asked him, is it due to COVID restrictions? And he said, no, they said Western influence. So there you go. that's bing, what bing, they bing. actually it, it said. It actually matches up with the other people we talked to. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad this guy put this out because the people we talked to would... <laughs> I mean, they didn't want us to go out and be like, my school said, but this guy, we don't, you know, this yeah. guy didn't post his job or anything. No, 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 no. It's look, it's, you're going to put something publicly on Twitter. It, no, I get it. No, discussion. I'm saying like, if, but if we talk we, about our friends. Like, yeah, you know. we know that this is something that's happening all over China and sure. has been even when we were there. Yes. So to see it now hit private schools like this, and, and sure. I'll continue this over here because he was talking to someone. They said, oh, finally, they cracked down on Halloween too. I've been trying to celebrate Christmas with my ex-students and the authorities always canceled my special yep. class due to religious influence. Yep. But it was totally fine uh, for them to celebrate Halloween. Uh, yep. he, so he said, I know public schools are like that here and have been for a while, but I didn't expect it to come to private schools. That's the problem. Guessing Christmas will be canceled soon. I'll have to invent a new celebration for that time. So the she influence thing, like mm -hmm. obviously you saw the the kids uh, reading off the little passages of Xi Jinping thought. Mm -hmm. That was in public schools, but the thing is, like the private schools have often been insulated from a lot of the regulations. And I, I say insulated, they can't. You can't just go in there and be like, yeah, let's promote democracy. Sure. But I'll, I'll give you an, uh, an uh, example. Yeah. There was a kid in mm -hmm. my. First school that I worked at, right? Yeah. This is in 2009, 2010, 2009. Yeah. So this is Hu Jintao's period. Yeah. He used to wear a Taiwan flag pin. Okay. And his dad was Taiwanese and okay. working in China. And he would go in and talk about how Taiwan is a separate country and oh, tell the would. other kids in yeah. Chinese. That's how different it was then mm. than it is now. Can you imagine that happening it's now? Can't, it can't happen. And that was at a private school, and it was a little bit insulated from that kind of yeah. stuff. You could still do the holidays and all this kind of stuff, but it's just new Xi Jinping thought. This The tentacles have really traveled through every business in China. Yeah, because they're like, hey, look, it doesn't matter if you're a private company. You yeah. must obey the Chinese rules yeah. and regulations, and that means everything, including this nonsense, like you can't celebrate Halloween. Yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to continue this um, because somebody replied to him and said, last year when I was in Shanghai, some place, some places had a sign outside saying no Christmas celebrations. The sign was uh, from the Shanghai government. And this is in Shanghai, yeah. guys. Western influences are bad, said the government. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, anyway, I, I also just wanted to point out a phenomenon that happened here, okay? Because um, some other people asked, have you been allowed to celebrate it in previous years and he said yeah we did last year um and they said oh so that's worrying i really hope it improves soon that type of thing it won't by the way um but then i mean now this is a pretty innocuous post he literally said oh this sucks you know the children were looking forward to it why can't they have fun guess what he starts getting he starts getting the woomals yes so now you've got people posting on that same post of his have you considered just not forcing your western festivals on your students just leave if you don't like it. We know what to celebrate and what not to. And stop whining, okay? And then somebody else is like, these days people bitch on anything about China. Just leave if you aren't happy, <laughs> happy there, you know? Like, why? Why does, this, why does it have to be like that, right? So, um, he, you know, it, it's, I, I think he's probably getting a taste of what we deal with all the time, to be honest. Yeah. You know? 
unless you praise China and the CCP 100% of the time, you will be subject to these attacks. Yeah. For sure. you, you cannot have any criticism. Oh, it's just the beginning, right? You can't have any criticism, even if no. it's a mild criticism. So he even said himself, he said, so I post 99% positive about China because I like living here, love my job, friends, and the food. It's enough to keep me happy here. But if I post one thing I'm frustrated about, I'm told, you're anti-China. Leave if you don't like it here. Ha ha, get a grip and a life. Welcome <laughs> to me and Winston posting 99% percent positive things and getting absolutely decimated and not by normal people no by rabid nationalists trained and forced by the government to come attack us and this is what this is what happens well that's how it starts yeah okay so for us it was a similar deal very positive yeah. we start getting attacked for very basic criticisms Just of things like that should frustrations scary. that should yeah. be and the more you get attacked the more you see how bad the system is you know the yeah. more you see how unhealthy it is, and the more you actually realize that there's a lot that people need to be talking about, but you can't because you try to talk about even the slightest problems and you just get railroaded by these absolutely savage attacks. Yes. Right? So um, I just wanted to point out for his sake that he is just overly positive about China, you know? Sure. Just look at some of his posts here. I could never afford a place like this on my own back in back home in the UK, but here in China, I can afford it with ease. I mean, it's whatever. It's new. I move it's in like fresh week. off the boat syndrome. I get it. Yeah, whatever. But I just want to point out, like, heading to Shanghai this weekend for a few days. Can't bloody wait. Last time I was here was before lockdown. Next next post that he puts out. The hotel I booked in Shanghai just phoned <laughs> me to say they're under lockdown for a week. It's not meant to be. Maybe another time, Shanghai. Okay, so he's like, tolerant. like I say, he's super positive, even when he keeps getting beat down. Right, right. Yeah, you know? So um, I just wanted to put that out there, that the guy is actually super positive, like shill level positive when it comes to China, but he's a nice guy. Sure. Um, and he just put out a little thing about the frustration about sure. the kids and, and uh, gets beat down by all those terrible womb out but hey listen this is real you know this affects all kids in china um and it's unfair you should be able to you really should be able to experience other cultures of course i don't know about you but um my kid whenever it's chinese new or whatever the the class will make lanterns and yeah, yeah. you know it's all about whenever it's cinco de mayo or something yeah. i don't even know what that holiday is sure. but whenever there's a a holiday that's big in another culture yeah they will Kwanzaa. be doing that. They yeah. will be doing something in their class, making little paper horses or making whatever it is that's right. got to do with a different culture. And I love that. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. But in China, they don't want that. They want one thing only. So we thought we'd show you some clips, which you you translated this for your main video, which you should go watch it. We'll, um, maybe you can link it in the comments. It's a good video. Yeah, sure. But um, we just wanted to show you some of the things that the, the kids in China are being forced to say or taught to say, we should say. 用一句话证明你是中国人。For those of you listening, uh, the teacher basically for each one of these questions says, "Say something to prove you're Chinese." So this little girl says, "If my beliefs had a color, they would be China red or communist." Hong. How can they claim a color, by the way? I don't know. Anyway. Okay, the people have faith and the country is powerful. I have no regrets entering life as a Chinese and leaving life as a Chinese person. Why are you making kids say that? Yeah. And then this guy, of course. Okay, again. We are born under the red flag and grow in the spring breeze. What does that even mean? You know? I don't know. I will study the rise of China. All right, little boy. That's kind of disturbing. Whoever offends our China will be punished, even if they are far away. That's that's the worst. I, I think that's the worst one. Why worst. are you teaching kids that? You know, why yeah. you got to teach them this nonsense? Whoever offends our China will be punished, even if they are far away. Yeah, I, I am willing to defend prosperous China as a fearless youth. 
此山不悔入华夏，来世还做。And this is they're teaching them the same rhetoric all over. Yeah, even all the classrooms. I have no regrets entering life as a Chinese and leaving life as a Chinese person. Yeah, it's a dumb thing to say anyway. 中国人非常棒。Making these poor kids say this. Stuff. I know it's ridiculous. Anyway,、uh, to continue on with the Halloween thing, it's banned in schools, obviously, and in government, anything connected to government and other big institutions. Yeah.、Um, but now, for instance, there's a place in Shanghai called Oak One Oak, which is one of these overly pretentious clubs. Um, actually, I think it started in New York, and there are various ones around the world.、Gotcha. It's one of those fancy schmancy. Oh, you know, the celebrities go there, and、gotcha. A-listers hang out, and、so、you can you can rent a private room for thirty thousand RMB for like a couple hours. I mean, clubs are fun when I was in my like teens and early twenties, but、mm-hmm. I feel like how do you continue that lifestyle? I'm not judging yeah. anyone. Just、yeah. how do you continue that lifestyle? Well, you gotta have a lot of stamina. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>、um, Now, do do you actually have it on your computer, the flyer? Because it's really small to read up there. I、um, want to read some of the res- the, the the restrictions yeah, or whatever. Yeah, I think I can pull it up.、So. Uh, one of the things that、yeah. uh, we both found quite amusing about this flyer. Okay, so maybe you can read what the rules are to so enter. So, to enter your venue, you'll need to provide a negative nucleic acid so wait, COVID th- test. They're having a, a Halloween themed party night.、Yeah. Okay, so you need to have your test. Okay, and. Within 48 hours, and a green health code. Also, a temperature will be scanned upon entry, and scanning the venue code will be required. Thank you for your patience and understanding in this regard. Then it says we will be open on blah blah blah. Please do not dress up as an epidemic prevention personnel. Da a da ba. So yeah, otherwise you know that... <laughs> you'll be denied entry. Thank you for your cooperation. I mean, I think that's the scariest thing you could dress up for. It is. You know, for Halloween、yeah. is an is a da ba or you know those stormtroopers that you see. But yeah, you're not allowed to do that. Don't do that. So,、um, just for those that might jump in and say, "Oh, you say Halloween's banned, but why can they have like Halloween parties at clubs?" Because that's different. Yeah, it's not a government, in, you know, institution. They're trying to get rid of any Western influence from from education. Yes, and from children. Yeah, Western textbooks, like you said earlier, have been thrown out. You're not allowed to teach Western te- textbooks anymore.、Nope. Anything that's They're trying to get rid of, and that's also why they've been trying to shape Hollywood to their、yeah. to their whims. For sure, they don't want like Western culture bleeding through、uh, film and music and things like that. So、Correct. you know, it's getting worse and worse and worse here.、Um, but that pretty much brings us to the end of Soft Power Hour today.、Um, do you want to answer a couple of super chats before we move on? Yeah, these are from last time.、Um, okay, you guys need to understand that we did a special report. Yeah. And- A couple of people、uh, sent some super chats. Are we going to do those in Yamcha? Okay, we can do those in Yamcha. Yeah,、um, let's do a、I、couple just, live ones. We we lost the super chats from this episode, so I'm waiting for the email. Oh, okay, then go ahead. Yeah, get some of the old ones.、Uh, could you do a show on Xi Jinping came into power? It's from Rick George because he、oh. doesn't come across as being smart.、Um, we kind of did in my last video, to be honest. Yeah,、mm-hmm. watch my newest video. Yeah,、uh, Will Jiang is in the description. Will Jiang Zemin be purged next from Kuala Twelve O Three? No, but people、uh, around him in his clique.、Probably. Yeah, the people in his clique are are kind of being taken out. You can watch our ADV China that we released. Yeah, very. The one with the, the doll head on the thumbnail. Yeah, the one with the this、head. this crazy situation where the Chinese government tried to pay us to smear basically a Jiang Zemin faction person. Yeah, yeah.、Uh, I'm here to find me to the hardest working man on YouTube. Thank you oh, thank、much. you. Antis Farmer, thank you very much. I was so surprised by this. I did not believe it.、Uh, who looks twenty years older and six inches shorter? This is Saddam Hussein level power move. Yeah. Yeah. After that, right?、Mm-hmm. Uh, Gary Vincent said, "You know it's important when Seamilk puts on a jacket." That's right.、Yeah. I had a suit jacket on in that video. Yeah. Maybe it'll be a special report thing. If you know I'm wearing, if I'm wearing a jacket, then you know something crazy. Yeah, it's something、on. crazy. Yeah. We hope you guys enjoyed that special report. By the way. Yeah. We'll be doing things like that in the future if something is. Breaking news, and it has to be, you know, yes, talked about.、Mm. Uh, Taiwan number one from Jimmy Huang agreed.、Mm-hmm. This question might be a bit weird, but is Hu Jintao's lack of black dyed hair during the meeting about the sign that he's about to be purged? Now, don't look too.、Much、I don't、that. think so. I doubt it. <laughs> It's called just embracing what you look like. I, yeah, I have gray hair too. I don't dye it. Yeah, most of the Xi Jinping officials do use shoe polish or whatever、yeah. in their hair. That, that's a good point. They、Shows、do. You a, Fakeness. <laughs> yeah, you you've noticed they're they're definitely just like shoe polished up. Yeah, just be yourself. Exactly. Leonard says it always been like that. Zero opposition, zero abstainers since she came into power. It's more more so nowadays. Yeah, correct. Of course, it's always been. 
Yeah, if you'd seen the to special report, extent, that'll give yeah. you context. All right, let's move on. Yeah. Uh, but before we move on, we wanted to tell you about our Monday show very briefly, guys. It's called Shaban Ho. We got a little pre. Well, we got a little clip for you of what we got up to last week, um, and then we've you got a preview. Escape getting rubbed up against when you're in China. Whereas in China, you're getting molested and you're losing your wallet. But when the, the bus would stop, you would see people rush off and puke. People don't mind burping and farting and so on and yeah, so that's... forth. Yeah, like a tin of sardines or something like yeah, that. That's what I do when I'm like cheek to jaw with people. I just bust out some dried mango. Just, just the, no, it's... You, you'll go crazy. Slap, punch, and then went up to the bus driver and then called the police. If trying to get off is a nightmare. Yeah, the, I mean, up to your throat. Yeah. You can barely breathe. It's not cool to have filthy uncles rubbing up against you. No. Oh, yeah. So hang on. What you're seeing behind you now, by the way, um, is not someone getting ridden over by a motorcycle. Don't worry. Uh, um, but we we came up with this idea for Monday show that we wanted to share with you, for those of you who um, are going to be there. It's what people do in the rural countryside of China for fun. Yes. Because, okay, we've never really <laughs> talked about that. <laughs> I just looked up. Um, up. We'll take a look at this tiny little clip. So that's what we're, we're going to be doing that on Monday. There's a lot of stuff to show you. So for those of you who don't know, we have a kind of a VIP show on Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not about the news. It's about just funny little topics like that. So we're going to be talking about what people do in the rural countryside of China for fun. It's going to shock you. Um, um, they bring these circuses out. They do this, all sorts of... We've seen it multiple times. Yeah. And there's lots of footage we can show you. It's ridiculous yeah it's I, just weird i don't want to forget the crazy shit i've seen yeah, out there. yeah. so it's gonna be monday's episode definitely yeah. go join us uh patreon.com slash adv podcast shop on hotier yeah we love it you don't have to watch it live it'll be up afterwards you can go watch all the old episodes it's the biggest way to support our channel as well yeah uh to what we do um and it's one of our favorite things to do because it's very intimate we can chat with you guys the whole time yeah it's, yeah, it's awesome. awesome so awesome. yeah we're looking looking forward to seeing you there on monday if you are a shaban ho er yeah if you're a shaban ho <laughs> yeah there we go anyway guys um it's time for us to move on to our next segment which of course is wumao corner where we talk about the wumaos and what they get up to um as you saw in our previous segment, they go and attack people for having a, a genuine frustration about something in China. They tell them to get out of here. If you don't like China, leave, yep. you know, because yep. that's always going to fix a problem. Yes. You know, hey, look, this room is on fire. Oh, if you don't like it, get out. It's yeah. like, how about we all get together and put the fire out? No, if you don't like it, leave. Yeah. We'll burn. You know, that's what's going on with that crap. Yes. Um, so what do we got over here, Sea Milk? I actually don't know what this is all about. Sorry, I'm just trying to find a way to get the Super Chats back. Okay. Um, go ahead. Yeah, well, uh, this this little article that you've got up here, it says uh, SCMP, which is South China Morning Post. By the way, South China Morning Post was previously, it's based out of Hong Kong, yes. okay? And it's a news outlet, okay? Just like, I don't know, New York Times or something like mm -hmm. that. But previously, it enjoyed a lot of autonomy because, you know, back in the day, at least when for the majority of the time that uh, we were living in China, Hong Kong was, for all intents and purposes, its own country. Yep. The laws were different there. You could do whatever you wanted as far as freedom of speech was concerned. Not, not anymore. China has torn up its agreements. It's gone back on its word. It's broken all its promises. And now if you try to say anything that's against the Chinese government or Xi Jinping, you will actually get um, punished and you will get yep. arrested and so on. That wasn't the case back in the day. So anyway, the SCMP got taken over by uh, Chinese interests, and they cannot say well, they cannot be objective news anymore. Yes, they can only to a certain point, and then they have to toe the party line. So um, it's kind of it's lost all its credibility anyway. So um, it says here, the South China Morning Post editor who quit over rejected story on Xinjiang human rights abuses abuses is warned not to publish it. So what's this all about? So he he basically was you know he wanted to quit because he was so upset that they weren't publishing anything about the Xinjiang human rights abuses. But they obviously did research um, in leading up to that whole thing. Yeah. Know, so the they were going. Part. He was going to yeah publish the story, right? They were like, "Don't do it." So he, he's like, "Fine, f you, I'll, I'll quit." So right? he quit. Yeah. And they said, "If you if you go on to publish that elsewhere, you're done. You're yeah. in, you're in big trouble. Be careful." So this is a huge supposed to be transparent news source, by the yeah. way. Yeah. that has been well trusted and like that's threatening this journalist from yeah. saying anything so there's obviously something going down 
Yeah, I, obviously there is. And it's awful that, um, you know, people are being silenced through threats and intimidation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's some Wumao stuff going on there. There's some haters over there. Um, haters going to hate. What's going on here? Uh, here. So there was a, uh, uh, it says, an alarming tale of suspected Chinese influence operation in Thailand, where uh, Samyan Press, founded by Netuit C, mm-hmm. says it was offered... Two million bots by a Chinese businesswoman to close down. Samia is known for criticism of CCP and support for Milk Tea Alliance. So, uh, mm-hmm. Thailand, not a super free country, but much freer than China, uh, has some freedom of press. Very yes. critical. There are a lot of news outlets there that are critical of China, the Chinese government. Yeah. Uh, and Thailand's a huge hub for the Milk Tea protests, which is the conglomeration of, of freedom loving people in Hong Taiwan, Kong. Hong Kong, uh, Thai- Thailand, and Myanmar. Yeah. Uh, that would come together and want to fight oppression from the Chinese government and say yep. the Chinese government doesn't represent them. Correct. That's the Milk Tea Alliance. So they were tr- they were basically offered to be bought out. Uh, yeah. From a lot of, what is it, 2 billion bot or 2 million bot? 2 million bot. That doesn't two even million, sound like a lot, does it's it? It's not. Bot's not very valuable. 2 million bot to USD. Uh, it's $52,000. Yeah. So, okay. I mean, it's a lot It's a lot, it's of, a lot money. of money, but it's, it's not probably a lot. A, to, like, it's probably down. a small time publication, yeah, small. though. Anyway. Uh, yeah. You see this all over the world, you know. Uh, They're really trying to the stop everything. The CCP trying to use money and yeah. coercion and bribery to silence any criticism. Yes. I mean, you can look at it from the micro, macro scale, micro scale, doesn't matter. Look at, for instance, the Wumao going after someone having a little bit of a frustration because they can't have a Halloween party for the kids anymore. Yeah. Trying to say, get out of here, shut up. They try to silence them. Look yeah, at how... It's a little taste of what, yeah, you know. Yeah, that's just a very tiny taste, but it gets bigger and bigger and it gets blown out of proportion to the point where you've got them going after, for instance, they went after our families, our wives, yeah. my family in South Africa, sure. to try and get me to silence to be quiet Mm -hmm. you know how they go after dissidents which we'll talk about a little later and their families and all that kind of nonsense it's incredible they'll do anything to stop even the basic most slight criticism of the ccp and china yeah even got people going out there trying to dig up my tax records and things like that to try and say that i'm i'm doing something weird to try and get me to silence up or whatever which doesn't work because i'm completely above board so it's just ridiculous I mean, I got people that contact me and they're like, hey, did you know that there's this guy living in Shenzhen who's asking if we have any dirt on you and asking yep. if if uh, you th- you have access to his tax records and his immigration status yep. and all that. We got people like that going on, c- contacting Those multiple people. Those people are hired people. by the Chinese government. We know who you are, yeah, by the way. Yeah, we do know exactly what's going on. Um, but just, you know, that's the kind of thing they do. They're underhanded. They're scumbags. Yeah. Uh, let's move on. So uh, what's next? Oh, oh the one done, yeah. This one's great. This is in my... It's not great, actually. No, I mean, <laughs> it's yeah. not great. It's not great. Yeah. But, finished uh, egg. Finished egg, dude. Yeah. One done actually means like game over. Game it's, over, It's yeah. over. I got this message of ton. You got it too. Yeah. Uh, from people the other day. And mm-hmm. it was coming in hard and fast from Chinese people. And it was even coming from people that were previously supporting Xi Jinping and China. Yeah. And it was crazy to see because it was after the purge. Yes. The alleged purge. And then also after Xi Jinping got his third term. Yeah. It was a huge yeah. wake up call for a lot of people that were keeping optimist values, like Chinese people in China. Yeah. Keeping optimist values about or ideas about where China was going. Hey, maybe things will get better. And maybe it's just bad right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And a lot of people have just thrown in the towel. And this yeah. is their phrase. But it was uh, it was censored. Yeah, essentially, you can't say it's over, it's finished. Yeah. You know, you can't actually use that phrase. Which shows you how big that phrase got. (laughs) Yeah. If If they're censoring it, like, internet-wide, that means that that is something people have been posting about a lot. And they just don't like it. They're like, "Uh oh, got to stop people talking about this. You know, I don't want this to catch on. Right. Mm. So, yeah, that's kind of sucky. Let's see what what else. Oh, that's the end of that segment, is it? Yes. So are we going to skip right into Worldview? Yeah. Okay. Worldview, guys, where we talk about what's going on in the world, specifically with regards to China. We got something for you here. Remember when China started to build these artificial islands in the South China Sea? Yes, I do. Remember? What was the quote? Uh, they were like... Spratly islands? 
they were like, we will not militarize these. We will never militarize these islands. Yeah, because, I mean, look, everybody was objecting to it, okay? Yeah, because, everyone. first of all, they're building them in contested waters, waters yeah. that belong to, like, Vietnam or in whatever, Philippine, Philippines, yeah. Yeah. in the area. So everyone's like, what the hell are you doing? They're like, don't worry about it, you know? We first, won't. Yeah. First of all, they're like, don't worry about it. This belongs to us anyway. We've got an ancient map, okay? Yes. And then, secondly, they're saying, like, it's okay. We're just building islands just so we can keep an eye on the area. We're yeah. not going to militarize them. Don't worry about it. Guess what? They militarized them. We all know that, right? But these yeah. are some nice, clear pictures that have just emerged of some of those islands. Yes, from yesterday. Yeah. Uh, very clear. Usually you get like very far away, kind of grainy. Yeah, you'll get like a satellite image or something. This is a very, a very good image where you let's, can see. Let's see. So this is not, uh, these are not being militarized, right? Yeah, those see are, anything there? Well, yeah, I see um, airstrips. I hmm. see hangars okay. for military aircraft. I okay. see... Right. Maybe just storage. Yeah. I mean, I Is see... That, are those CCP buildings? Yeah, those are 100% government buildings. Oh. I see training uh, facilities for military over there. Oh. You see, like, the fields yeah, and the, the parade training. grounds and things like that for the military. Mm. Um, one thing, I also see some what looks like some kind of a massive... I don't know if it's a turret or something yeah, over there. It could that? be a crane. I don't know. Mm. But that's Is not that a looking... watchtower, a military watchtower. Oh yeah, there's a, a mili tower? there's a military watchtower and a big fenced off area up huh. there as uh, as well. Yeah. For whatever reason, there's tons of radar, Doppler Why radars, and Doppler? so on. Yeah, so quite a few radar going on over mm. there, you know, and also just the whole kind of military thing. Mm, I wonder what else, what else is going on here. There we go. How about a military AWACS? Knock off. No, those are just those just must be houses in somebody's private jet. It's somebody's private AWACS <laughs> knockoff. I don't even know what the Chinese equivalent's called. It's uh, probably called a a Hong. Is that a medical uh, military airstrip right there? Yeah. Or maybe a helicopter landing pad. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's it's clearly not militarized, right? It's just got barracks and it's got like a yeah. military aircraft there. Which, for those of you who don't know what an AWACS aircraft is, um, that's China's knockoff of it. But that's basically a massive monitoring station in the sky yeah when you fly that up there you run your command post from that plane because that has yeah. massive radar they can keep up to date on all the entire battlefield arena basically yes. and they can see what's going on and what's flying here and there and they communicate and so, send soldiers here and military planes there so as we leave this picture up yeah just want to ask a question just hypothetically so yeah. all the people that believed China when they said officially, not officially, but it's the official. Way, they said, We, the South China Sea belongs to China, but we will never militarize the South China Sea. There yeah, will never we be will Chinese not militarize military, these fake islands. These fake building. islands, they won't, we won't have a military presence in these seas. And that, that was a way to placate the world. Like, okay, fine. Yeah, just keep doing what you're doing then. It's okay. The whole idea that the Blue Water Navy in America keeps the, the international trade open and all this kind of stuff. Don't worry about that because that nothing's going to change. Status quo won't change. We yeah. won't militarize. We won't build, you know, these fake islands you keep seeing pop up. That's just because it's an integral part of our territory. Sure, sure. We won't militarize this. Our, we're still here in 2022. And we're still seeing a lot of governments capitulate and say, you know what? Okay, China, we believe you. Mm. How many times do we have to get smacked in the face over and over again, really? Yeah. Until we wake up and say, wait, everything they say, they do the opposite of. Everything. Every single thing. Everything. Um, China has not kept one promise. No. And every big thing they go on about, like, oh, we're, you know, going to do green technology. We're going to reduce carbon emissions. No, they double down and make more. And they build more coal-burning power plants. Yeah. And they're still continuing to build even more and more. So the world is going yeah. crazy about reducing carbon emissions because we're in a basically a, a global catastrophe right now heading towards global catastrophe because of climate change sure and china is the poster child for the people doing the most they're doing the most damage yeah but they're the poster child for people do, developing the most green technology to right. make sure we avoid this crisis yet they keep adding coal plants sure. and they make more carbon than everyone combined well that's it's it's smoke and mirrors because yeah. if they can say Look at all our green technology projects. Look how we're world leaders in green technology. So when anyone comes up to them and says, hey, man, why are you polluting more than every the entire world combined? They're like, we're the leader in green technologies. And then they're like, oh, okay, that's fine then. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine then. Okay. Oh, you're great. Carry on. Bow down. Like, maybe we should learn something from you. Yeah. You, you, still, have, you still have people in the U.S. in educational facilities in, all over the place, really. Not the majority. 
You yeah. still have people using China as the positive example for every single good thing in this world. Yes. I, and I just, just I, I'll print this out for all the people that have this, and I want you to put this on your wall, and you can I'll autograph it for you. <laughs> okay. And you can remember <laughs> what China's promises mean. Nothing. It's a joke. Yeah. It's giant North Korea. Mm. We are headed for global disaster if we keep letting China get away with everything. Yeah. I don't know how I can over. I can't overstate this. Yeah. It's it's dire. Yeah. We're watching China destroy the entire world and militarize the world. Yeah, no, look, they're doing all sorts of nasty things, stealing um, intellectual property, uh, doing, co you know, espionage and military and corporate and all that stuff, and and completely ignoring copyright and completely yes. ignoring all the, the rules when it comes to the world. Look at what they did with the consulate. We'll actually yes. get onto that next. I believe that's the next thing. Um, and the problem is, is that they do all these missteps all the time, and nobody seems to call them out. Yeah. Why? All these like clandestine police stations that have now recently cropped up everywhere. Just, why are you just finding out now? And also, why is there not some serious repercussions? Yeah, come on. It's it like, should be a global emergency right it now. It should be like China is trying to infiltrate and mess with our local... Legal system. And politics. Safety, politics. And politics. Universities and Confucius Institutes and all that kind of nonsense. It's everything. They keep doing all these things. And if you... If you take one instance here and one instance there, you might not think it's that bad, but put them all together and it's this massive it's warfare. warfare. It's, it's warfare. It's, it's war. war. It's informational warfare against the rest of the world. Yeah. Uh, the hacking, the stealing, the theft, the undermining, the bribery, the uh, coercion, all this nonsense, you know? Yeah. It's, it's warfare. But now, we need to draw a clear line, as we always do, between the Chinese government and the people of China. And that's yeah. why this is very important. This is uh, something we want to show you, this cartoon that was um, shared actually on our... Was it on our subreddit? No, actually, I know this person. Okay, you know them personally. Yeah. Spring Must End. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, this is a great uh, Chinese cartoon. Uh, yeah. It's called I'm Chinese Butt. So we're going to play these and we'll read this, the slides. Yeah. So I'm Chinese Butt. All right. I don't believe I shall put my own needs continues the next slide mm -hmm. behind the needs of the state and it shows cgtn on yeah the, which is saying like have, have more, more babies. babies yeah i don't think that human rights is a western colonial construct but a universal voice for decent human conduct and that's a commentary on how china always says that democracy and human rights are just a so-called construct of colonialism when in fact yeah. human rights are just a good value that values human beings lives absolutely i don't I, believe that many crimes committed by western countries absolve the crimes of our own and that's another trope this for this is something that is very important and i like i like this this commentary very much because the whataboutism yeah. Is the the go-to knee-jerk reaction to any defense. Whenever somebody points or criticizes the slightest thing about China, they're always like, oh yeah, yeah well, America did this, Iraq, or something about something that happened a long time ago in the past or something else. You know, it doesn't yeah. stop it doesn't stop the fact that what China is doing is bad. You yes. should be able to criticize it. You can't just whitewash it by saying, Oh, but America. Yeah. You know? But that's the go to. It is. So the, the I so like this commentary. Yeah. Absolve the crimes of our own as we see. Okay, keep going. Yeah. It says, I don't believe the Chinese government represents me, my blood, my heart, or my conscience. And it has the, the People's Congress logo, the the you know, Chinese government logo being yeah. covered up. So please don't show me that silly red flag or any new decree. And let me find out for myself what it mean, what being Chinese means to me. I thought that was a really great cartoon. It was really touching yeah. and uh, great. It's just a great human uh, way to look at things. It's not, the government does not represent human beings. And that's the thing. The government does not represent the Chinese people. That's what they're trying to always put out there. They say there are blood ties between the CCP yes. and the, the people of China. They try to pretend because the Chinese people actually have no say over what the government no, does. None. So they can go out and say, all Chinese people hate radishes. Right. They can say that. And no they'll one be can... like, oh, okay, if you stand up and say that's illegal because you're spreading rumors. 
Yeah. <laughs> you so know? now you're not allowed to say like, no. that's not true. That means everyone in China hates radishes. And yeah. then people are like, I freaking love yeah, radishes. Yeah, exactly. And you see this happen all the time because the government will say, oh, you've hurt the feelings of the Chinese yeah. people yeah. if, I don't know, Japan has a festival or something. Right. And then suddenly if you're Chinese, you must now yeah. be feeling hurt or something, yeah. you know? And if you don't, that means you're a traitor. You're a traitor and then yeah. you should be ostracized from society. And that's why we have to, every time we say China's doing something, we're obviously talking about the government, not the people themselves, you know, that don't have a choice. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, I encourage everyone, like somebody just posted on our subreddit, I've caught so-called ADV China talking crap. Here is footage of Wu Jintao returning yeah. from his And they played it, in re- played it in reverse. Anyway, everyone go follow Spring Must End. Uh, fantastic Chinese uh, artist. Mm-hmm. A great, she does great stuff. Um, really, really appreciate her work. And I think you guys will too. What I appreciate is that she's not using sand to make her art. Yeah, because it's, it's real. Like you actual and your stuff. Sand. Why do you hate sand so much? What I are think, you freaking uh, what? Freaking Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> I just don't I don't I, for me it's like if there's a better way to do something, I prefer that, you know? Sure. If you're artistically inclined, <laughs> read you know, this. Just what? read it. You it says, read it Anakin says, I don't like sand. <laughs> it's coarse and rough and irritating and it gets everywhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's true. Yeah. Actually, I'm not a huge fan of sand. Okay. You know? You know, like if you go to the beach or something, or if you go to like is that why the you desert? Like to, you always want to go to the lake, but you never wanted to go to the beach. Now I get it. You yeah. want to look at the beach, but you never wanted to go on the beach. Well, I, I I love going to the beach. I used to love going to it when it was nearby. But the thing is, you always have sand everywhere afterwards. It never goes away. Anakin over here. Don't don't use it for art. Sure. You can melt um, it down and make it into glass. By the way, I have mm-hmm. all. I don't have any super chats up until Norman Fair. So what I'm going to do mm-hmm. is I'm going to start a thread on the subreddit. Um, because uh, no one's sending me them. Uh, oh. YouTube had a glitch, as as always. Mm-hmm. Uh, YouTube had a glitch, and it actually paused the stream here, and then they all vanished. I didn't even reload. That's uh, awful. Yeah. So everything sent before Norman Fair. If you posted a super chat, make it very simple. All you do is go to Reddit.com/r/advchina. Mm-hmm. I'll make a thread right now. I'm gonna make a thread right now. Okay. You post what your super chat was. It'll be a comment, and we'll read it either in this show if you get it in time, or on the next show. Yeah, we apologize for that. We have yeah. to have a backup for this. We can't let this happen. I again. usually do. I have a person that's supposed to be documenting all this stuff. Did, he didn't they, manage to get it. I think it, it. I actually think it glitched on his end too. Mm, okay. So. Well. Anyway, to continue in the world news, we have some good news. Okay. Uh, let us get a s- smaller in here in the corner. Um, It says, the Department of Foreign Affairs informed the Chinese embassy that the office on Chapel Street should close and cease operations. What's this? This is is Ireland, right? Yeah. You sure it's Ireland? It is. Okay. So, for those of you... You can't see the Gaelic on top? No. Mm. No, I can't. (laughs) Stop it. (laughs) You stop it right now. Watch your mouth. I was just thinking about a hairy dude taking a lick of that <laughs> sign. But anyway, let's uh, let's move you on. Call gay people a uh, gay. <laughs> what? No, <laughs> what are like you talking about? Chi- you know, in China, when they're yeah. like the gays. <laughs> That's how, like, if, if you hear like a non-native English speaker yeah. talk about gay people in China, they'll say a uh, gay instead of like a gay person. Probably get a mind out of the gutter. But remember, <laughs> yeah. there's that drink. It's very popular in South Africa and also in in Hong Kong for some reason. Horlicks. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? I can't handle that one. Every like, time you brought that up, Horlicks. Yeah, do you want come you know, on? Do you want some Horlicks? And like, uh, yeah. I guess if no one's ever grown up with that stuff, yeah, you'd be like, what, what are you? They call what are you proposing here? Breakfast sausages in England. It's a whole different story. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Anyway, guys, uh, all that nonsense aside, we all know about these so-called um, police stations, and the Chinese government keeps going back to the one reason. You know, the one reason that they say that these these um, liaison officers, what do they call them? Like, um, Just a sec. I'm, by the way, I'm posting in the chat right now mm-hmm. uh, the link to go post your thing. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. So what are they calling them again? They're like uh, service overseas, stations. Overseas police service station. They, the Chinese government has officially responded whenever they're questioned about it, and they always say it's because of driver's licenses. Yes. That's the only reason they can give. Yeah. The They're only like, oh, reason. if you need your driver's license renewed when you're abroad, like your Chinese driver's license, by the way, uh, you got to come to this. You can go to this station. Guess what? The consulate and embassy is supposed to do that. Yes. No excuse. There's no excuse. Every ex- They should have come up with something really special. Yeah. Oh, we'll help you like translate if you get into trouble or something in the local country. Mm-hmm. No. 
number one, the people in those stations probably don't even speak English. Yeah. Number two, why is it a police station if it's just volunteers? Yes, yes. Why is it Fuzhou Overseas Police Station? Why is it not called? Yeah. Why is it not called like Fuzhou DMV Station? Yeah. Right. Fuzhou is responsible for a lot of China's very horrific stuff. Do、mm. not look into this. Yeah. You'll you'll be disturbed. That that is the province that is known for really disturbing methodology of of harassing people abroad. Yes. And so, what a surprise that it's the Fuzhou overseas police officers、yeah. that are springing up in other other countries. It should be called a police office.、No. If it's about driver's licenses, it should be called the the Ch- Chinese overseas department of motor vehicles or whatever the、yes. equivalent is.、Um, yeah, like Chinese translation office. Yeah. You know what I mean. Anything like that. So. It's bullshit, and also、yeah. the fact that in Chinese media they brag all the time about how these、um, overseas police stations have been successful、yes. in you know coercing people to come back to China to face their crimes. Yes. So it's a bald-faced lie once again by all the the Chinese officials that go out there and say, "Oh, it's for driver's licenses."、Yep. Like oh we don't really know what's going on there and blah blah so, blah. So yeah, so update.、Uh, mm-hmm. Ireland shut down. They're the first. Yeah, Ireland、Props、actually. Ireland. They actually went out there and they said. Big fan of Ireland、hey, these days. Yeah, listen, shut this crap down. You know we didn't we didn't authorize this. What's this all about? I actually we have some subscribers from Ireland that I've been chatting in DMs with, and they're super cool. Learning a lot about Ireland, and they have a really the reason this happened. There is. They have a really big problem with foreign police influence offices ever since what happened. You know. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> so it's very, very. They're staunchly against that kind of stuff, which is、yeah. great, and I think it's a great first example because just、uh, just now we got reports they're probably going to shut down the ones in the Netherlands. Yeah, let's、um, hope. Let's hope this starts the ball rolling with a bunch of these stuff. These should not exist, guys, and they're going to get relabeled as something else for sure. Yeah. You gotta keep. Gotta keep this moving. Yeah. There's police stations run by one of the most oppressive mafia governments in the world r- operating out of these countries. Yeah, in my own. Yeah, what are you doing? And Stop. They co-opt addresses of Chinese businesses、yeah. and things like that to run out of them. Yeah. And they 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 say they're run by volunteers or whatever. You know, they、yeah. bring in volunteers. It's not volunteers, mate. It's actual police officers that just fly in from on a tourist、yep. visa or whatever from China, and they're volunteers go sit in there and intimidate people and do all sorts of nasty things,、um, and basically tell the Chinese diaspora that they are not out of reach of、yeah. the CCP. It's a、yeah. disgusting thing that they do.、Uh, we're very happy that more. Uh, light has been shone on this. So, safeguard defenders who actually released the the report that kicked this all off. Yeah, they're a Spanish、uh, think tank, by the way. Yeah, <clears throat> and of course, all of you out there, when we put it out there, the fact that you guys spread the word and talked about、yep. it helped a lot. We need these things shut down. The overreach of the CCP needs to be reined in. I、They、mean, can't just get away with this stuff all the time. There's two spheres of thought, right? Yeah.、And、Winston and I are often in the sphere of thought, like we want what's best for China, and that's simply because we have so much, and not invested. I don't want to use that word because people think it's money. No. We have no so、money. much emotional investment in the、mm. country, and it, we can't tear ourselves away from that. But we also have to be in、uh, another line of thinking that we also want what's best for other countries too. Yeah. And we're. We're not transitioning from that. We're trying to balance both of those things because it's hard to not just focus on the, you know, what's best for China. That's really predominantly what we do. Yeah. Right now, we're trying to look at what operations and what sort of influence China's having abroad, and that's really something that needs to be focused on big time. Yeah. And that doesn't even need people like us to point it out. That people are in those countries. You guys are in those countries. You guys are the ones and think tanks and journalists and all this kind of stuff that can find this kind of stuff and weed、yeah. this shit out、yeah. because it needs to be dealt with. Yeah, there are no American police stations in China. No, you know. So there's an embassy. Let's even this playing field here. Yeah, get the Chinese police stations. Don't listen to their bullshit excuses because guess what? They can say it's a DMV office for helping people renew their driver's licenses, but why are they repatriating people without Operation Fox Hunt? Yeah. And that ties in what we're going to talk about next. But why are they doing that? And guess what? They're definitely using these police offices to track Chinese dissidents down. Of course. And number two, why would you believe them if they said otherwise? Because they didn't. They said they weren't going to militarize the Spratly Islands as well. And I guess、yeah. you guys just saw what happened there. Yeah, of course. They said so, that they、stop. wouldn't interfere with、uh, Hong Kong politics or anything、yeah. for fifty years. Yeah. That didn't last very long. No. Yeah. So anyway,、um, we we love the fact that Ireland actually closed that down. Okay, and now you're gonna tell us what's happening with old Garland go, over here. Go into the description. Yes. Get this loaded up in another tab.
Mm-hmm. Um, the coverage of it has 40 minutes of absolute blank in the beginning. So I, I, the link starts at the correct time. Okay. Um, and I posted that in our description. Load this up and watch this if you want a huge, if you want to see what a huge win looks like. Mm. Uh, Department of Justice in the U.S. used a few cases of finding, co- correctly finding Chinese influence operations in yes. New York City, catching two of the people involved in one case, and finding out how they were linked in the entire protocol of how Operation Fox Hunt works, which is how the Chinese government goes to the U.S. and other countries and finds Chinese people that they want to bring back to China to, to prosecute. Yes. Whether they're criminals or not, whether they're deemed like financial criminals or not, uh, oftentimes they're dissidents. They're people that are just uh, have spoken out against uh, the human rights abuses of the Chinese government. They will go f- coerce them to come back to China to be tortured or imprisoned. Yes. The Department of Justice f- managed to find some of these these people mm-hmm. and shut them down and uncover their entire operation. It's fantastic to hear about. I loved it. I loved listening to it. Uh, so open that up and watch that in your own time. And it was the first time I've seen the U.S. really openly go out there and say, we have our eyes on you. Don't try this shit again. Yeah. I loved it. Because up until fairly mm-hmm. recently, it's been just fair game, you know? Yeah the Chinese government can come and do whatever they want, yeah. you know, on foreign shores. They do. They, you yeah. know, launder money through casinos in Canada. You yeah. know, they come and mess up the, the the real estate market. They do all sorts of influence campaigns. They launder money. They get corrupt bribe stuff happening all over the place. They steal intellectual property. They do whatever. Yeah. And it's just, it's kind of a free-for-all. And it has been a free-for-all for the longest time. Yeah, um, for sure. You know, Look at what happened in Australia with milk powder and what, you know, with the dye go over there. Look what sure. happened with the PPE being taken from everywhere. It's just like, stop. There have to be checks and balances. We have to keep an eye on what the Chinese government is doing abroad, you know? Yes. And they use their citizens as like a, a spy network as well, you know? And it's, you need to have these cases where people are caught. People are brought to justice. Yes. And that will dissuade people that, for instance, yeah, it's like, uh, are living abroad and they're approached by the government and say, yeah. go go and harass this person, you know, go and steal this thing, go and do this, you know. They'll yeah. be like, wait a second, you know, people get arrested for that kind of thing. I, I don't think I'm going to do that. CCP is in the chat about this one. Oh, yeah? Do not like this. All right. That's interesting that they hate this so much. What, this particular yes. thing? Yeah. Of course wow, they would. Wow, they, they really stepped up their game. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're losing their... There are shirts off of this or whatever. That's true. Anyway, now this is exactly what we're talking over here, about over here, by the way. The Chinese police pressure family of U.S.-based student over support for bridge man or banner man, as we like to call him. So uh, this is a horrible thing that happens all the time. And it proves a point, what we've been talking about this whole time. Yeah. So um, this guy is in Washington State. Bellevue, Bellevue University, I believe. Han Yu Tao. He held up a, a poster and he's in support of the protest of Bannerman. Yeah. So his uh, brother told him not to be a traitor to China. Um, and uh, the Chinese government went after his family in China. Protect. Yeah. To basically tell him to stop. It's a great example of what they do. Yeah. Um, and it's rare that the people will report back on that. So, like, they'll go after a Chinese person's family in China and be like, okay, we got your parents. We yeah. got your whatever relatives. Or they'll be like... You better stop. Usually how it works, because I've interviewed people about this, so I've got some interviews yeah. on my channel, is they will get the relative to call them yes. on face chat or whatever, but they'll be sitting there with the police. Yeah. And the relative will be like, listen, um, you know, you got to stop posting things on Twitter. you got to stop doing what you're doing. Um, you know, it's not the right thing to do. And the police will be there uh, Mm -hmm. to basically say, hey, listen, if you don't stop what you're doing, bad things are going to happen to your family. Yeah. So they'll do that. And what happens is most of the time they'll be like, okay, I'll stop. Yeah. Or I'll go home. I'll repatriate. I'll do whatever. Yeah. But sometimes a brave person will stand up and be like, fine. I don't If you do that to my family, I'm just going to tell everyone, you idiot. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And they'll go like, this is exactly what they did. Here's the pictures. Here's the video. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. This is what they did to harass me. Yeah. And uh, it it really shines a spotlight on it. Yeah. It makes people say like, wow, 
Now that's a bad system. It's hugely yeah. embarrassing for the Chinese government to do those things and then to have someone go and tell people how it works because yeah. they're supposed to be masquerading as this free country and the alternative to, to America and they just make it look so much worse. Well, remember when I made that video and it's titled, mm. it's got an innocuous t- title. It's like, are Chinese men cowards? It's yeah. a question. It's yeah. not a statement, by no. the way. Learn the difference, people. Get educated. Yeah. Um, I put out there... When they went after my family in South yeah. Africa, they went after my wife. And remember, I posted the emails that they'd sent. Yeah. I posted the forum stuff yeah. that they were talking about, how to harass my parents yeah. and all that kind of thing. And when I posted it out there, a lot of them, like a lot of people on the Chinese internet went to those forums and like, don't, don't, don't do that. You're making us lose face. You're making right. us, you're embarrassing us because, you know, you're doing, you're doing it in a sloppy way. Learn right. how to do it better type right. thing. Yeah. But it actually did cause some backlash because normally they get away with that, right? Yeah. They'll, they didn't realize I can read Chinese and go to their forums and see what they're, yeah, they're planning, these yeah. dumbasses. But, you know, they went out there and they planned how to try to give, uh, they wanted to force me to have a mental breakdown yeah. to stop posting videos about sure. China. And they actually listed how they could do that. Yeah. In their forums, and they also listed even the stuff that's not public. It's yeah. all available, if you know what I mean. Yeah, exactly. Like, people know how to find stuff, and people send emails. Yeah, they do. People get in email chains on like how to, hey, you know, like by the way, I don't know why, but I somehow got this email, and they send it off, and they're like, oh, look at what they're planning now. Yeah, you know, yeah, it comes. To oh, us. they're in the wrong WeChat group. Ooh, yeah. Oops. Oops. <laughs> you know? But it was kind of ridiculous because they planned and they they released my parents like personal details and and email addresses an address and, and stuff and they instructed people how to harass my parents sure. it's very common for them to go after family yeah you know but because i publicly released that video it back it had a backlash effect and they had to like shut it down and they made sure. it all private and deleted stuff and all that but it also just embarrasses them but it shows you they get away with that stuff most of the time yeah you know they will get for away sure. with it because it it will intimidate people for sure it will silence people because they're too afraid of more of this stuff coming you know yeah anyway some weird tactics from the Wumao right now. It's uh, yeah. really weird. What are they doing now? I don't even want to bring it up because I don't. Okay. Know. Now, by the way, remember. It's really weird though. Okay. They're say because uh, I mm-hmm. you guys can't see it in the chat, but I'm getting inundated with hidden chats. Right. I'll just tell you how it's working. Yeah. And they're saying, they're saying what's happening in our video, but it's not what's happening in the video, and it's they're trying to trigger certain events by what by what they're saying. Oh, like, so they try- show blah 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 blah, it's and it's typical. not what's happening in the video. It's like that's bad. That's you guys shouldn't show that kind of stuff. And it's going yeah, they'll put like the, the, all kinds of stuff, all like kinds violence of violence and stuff. Yeah, which are normally will cause YouTube to have that's a knee jerk reaction and and remove the video. Or wow, something like they're that. really mad at this. They hate this. The last two slides. Yeah. We should spend more time on it. I think so. We'll definitely, <laughs> yeah. We'll bring, we'll make a whole episode about that next time. How about that or something? Yeah. We'll, yeah. don't worry. You're showing us your sensitive points. You shouldn't do that. You know, what's right. that about? Like protect your, your weaknesses or yeah. hide your weaknesses and something like that. Yeah. H- hide your strengths. It's supposed to be hide your strengths. Sure. Um, some nonsense. Some sure. some like art of war thing. Yeah. It comes from China. You guys should know better. Yeah. Anyway, remember the whole thing about the consulate where they dragged a protester in and beat him up? Yes. Um, and they destroyed the protesters' signs and stole them? Yeah. I'm pretty sure a consulate's not allowed to steal property of people and drag it into the consulate, right? I don't think so. Like, what if you had a car parked there and they just come and drag the car in there? Or, like, I don't know, you've got your cell phone there sitting, you're doing a TikTok video and dancing in front of it, and they come and grab the phone. They already have your personal information through TikTok, obviously, but they come grab the physical phone and take it in. Same thing. They grabbed the signs of the protesters and took them in, right? Yeah. So you know all about that story. We've covered it to death now. But what was the uh, response from the Chinese government? So the Chinese government, this is wild. Yeah. I mean, if I was the Chinese government, I would have just buried that, and, like let it go and move on. Yeah. But they're actually mad that anyone wants to look into what happens. Yeah. Because they said it's actually illegal to protect the protesters because pro- those protesters are secessionists and they're, pr- they're criminals, right? Right, right? So if you protect them... We're gonna hit you with trade. We're gonna hit you with trade uh, sanctions, trade sanctions and stuff. And they even busted out Aesop's fables. Yeah, we'll show you the little clip. It's it's English, so you can take a look at protecting this. shelter to the Hong Kong independent element will only, in the end, bring disaster to Britain. I remind you of a story of 
the farmer and the snake in Aesop's tales, where the farmer showed sympathy to the snake, but finally bit by the snake. Yeah, so I mean, I'm going to play that for you one more time. Let me just uh, let me just get it all the way there. Give me a second. All right. Okay, let's take a look. Protecting shelter to the Hong Kong independent elements will only, in the end, bring disaster to Britain. Now, right there, that is just a threat. Yeah. yeah. That's just a threat. Yeah. So. It's going to bring disaster to Britain if you shelter the the Hong Kong independence elements. Yes. It's a threat. Yeah. And I like how he uses the Aesop's fable, which um, is about the farmer who finds a frozen snake and like puts it in his shirt or whatever to warm it up. <laughs> yeah. And then the snake bites him or whatever. Because who's the snake here and who's the farmer? This is, yeah. What, uh, what would I say, by the way? What, what would you say? You'd probably tell him to... Don't uh, talk tripe. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, I'd tell him to don't talk tripe. The Chinese government with its is freaking snake. clandestine police stations <laughs> and it's beating people up on British streets and dragging them into the consulate and stuff. They're the snake. Yeah. And Britain has been, you know, helping out this snake for too long, you know, giving yes. them favorable trade, doing all sorts of nonsense, helping China out in many, many ways, sending aid. It was only two years ago that... They sent 70 million pounds of aid or whatever to China. They've been sending aid. They've been helping China out a lot for the longest time. For the longest time. No, and seriously, who is the snake here? It's the Chinese, the Chinese government. government. They're the ones that need to be kicked out. It's absolutely ridiculous. Thank you guys for, by the way, posting in the subreddit thread about your super chat. Thank you. You got, you got some? Yeah, no, I mean, they. Did all, someone find them? Most of, a lot of them populated the, the thread. Oh, they did. Great. Yeah. Okay, guys. So now we're actually going to move on to Yum Chat. Oh, look. Someone even posted them. I posted them there. That's this what we need. awesome. Thank great. you. Great. Thank you very much, guys. We don't ever want to skip anyone's question. No. That's not what we do around here. It's uh, Yum Chat time, guys. And for those of you who don't know what Yum Chat is, it's our Q&A section uh, where we answer Super Chats. You can watch them now live. You can watch them over the weekend. We cut them out of the show on Monday. Otherwise, it's too long for people who want to just watch the show. Yeah, for sure. Uh, this is where I get to loosen my tie a little bit. We get to relax, answer your questions. And if you're not watching now or on the weekend, stay awesome. We'll catch you next time. Yeah. Um, 